In this video, we will learn about how to bind a socket. First, let's go ahead and remove that test IP endpoint code we had. Before we implement the code to actually bind a socket, let's cover why we would need to bind a socket. So let's say that we want our server to listen uh, for connections on port 4790. Well, when people go to connect, they're going to specify that they want to connect to port 4790. However, when we create a socket, it isn't tied to any specific port. So what we need to do is bind to 4790, and then we will listen on this socket that we created. And that way, when new people try to connect, we will be listening on the correct port to be able to accept their connections. Let's go into the socket header. Our function will return a P result. We're going to call it bind. And for the parameters, it's going to take in an IP endpoint. Let's generate this definition. Now to bind, we're going to call a function called bind. You'll see bind will take in a socket handle, and then it will also take in a uh, the sock adder pointer and then the length of that sock adder. Keep in mind, when we use Internet Protocol version 4, we use sock adder n. When we use version 6, we use sock adder n6. So bind is set up to handle both of these by taking, instead it takes in um, one of these casted to a sock adder, and then the last argument will be the size of whichever struct we used. We're doing Internet Protocol version 4 currently, so we would use this, for example. To make this cleaner, I'm going to add in a function to our IP endpoint that can return a sock adder in that has the information that we want. So for now, let's go back into our IP endpoint. We're going to create a function that returns a sock adder in. We're going to call it get sock adder IP version 4 because this is going to be for getting the sock adder uh, struct for Internet Protocol version 4. Let's generate this definition. And the first thing we're going to do is assert that the IP version is version 4. Because otherwise, this, this doesn't make sense. You wouldn't call this for version 6. And we need to include that assert header here if we want to use asserts. Now let's go back down. All right, and if it is IPv4, we will create our struct. We will zero out the memory like this. We need to copy the bytes. So we're currently storing the IP bytes in a vector called IP bytes. So what we'll do is we'll do a mem copy. The first argument is the destination. So we want to copy it to where we are storing the address, which will be in sign adder. And then the source, of course, is going to be our vector of bytes and then the size is going to be an unsigned long because this is internet protocol version 4. Next we need to specify what the port is. Now the port is going to be our port that we are storing but not exactly. So if you remember in the pre-networking tutorials we talked about network byte order and Indianness for integers. For the port, we need to make sure that this is in network byte order. We know that all of the integers on our machine are going to be in host byte order, which might not be the same. It might be the same if we're on a big Indian computer, but it might not be as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to call a function called h2ns and pass the port into that. Now what is h2ns? h2ns is saying convert it from host to network byte order and what we are converting is a short a short is two bytes if we wanted to convert a long we would put h2nl for host to network long four bytes and if we wanted to do um, an eight byte integer we actually have to write our own function to do that but it's not very difficult and we will cover that later when we get into building packets the last thing that we want to specify is the address family, which since this is Internet Protocol version 4, it will be AFINet. So now that that's all set up, we will just return adder. 
and this should be good to go. Let's go back to our socket CPP. What we're going to do is we're going to create a socket adder in, set it equal to endpoint dot get uh, socket adder IPv4. Oh, and I guess we should probably name our variable. Now when we go to bind this, we will pass in the pointer to this variable and then the size of sock adder in. Oh, and we have to cast this to a sock adder pointer. Later, when we implement Internet Protocol version 6, this function will change slightly, but for now, this will suit our needs and it will just throw in a cert if they don't pass in an Internet Protocol version 4 endpoint. Next, let's look at what bind returns. If no errors occur, bind returns 0. Otherwise, it can return socket error, and we can get the error code by calling WSA get last error. What we will do is if result is not zero, if an error occurred, we'll get the error and store it, and then we will just return the not yet implemented error code, and then come back and do all of these in a really boring tutorial later on. Otherwise, if we get down here, we will return success. So if we go up to our server CPP, what we are going to do is after we create our socket, we're going to attempt to bind it and we're going to pass in an IP endpoint. There are a couple things we could pass in for the IP here. Let me go ahead and explain how these work when we are binding and when we are listening. If we pass in 127.0.0.1, this is the loopback um, address for the local host. So what this means is if we bind a socket to this address, only connections from this specific machine can connect. Alternatively, if I use my local address for this machine, which in the pre-networking tutorials we saw was 192.168.0.2, then any machine on my router can connect to me. However, outside connections will still not be able to connect to me. The last option is you can use a wildcard where you just have 0.0.0.0. And this means that any uh, machine will be able to connect to me. Also, make sure that you have your ports open as we covered in the pre-networking tutorial or else outside sources will not be able to connect to you like this. So now we are binding our socket, and we want to make sure that it is success. If it is, then we'll say Let's go ahead and build this and see what it says. There was build errors. Let's see what happened here. Okay, I think I need to move this WS2 TCP IP header from the CPP file for IP endpoint into the header file. Let's try this again and see if we're still getting errors. Okay, looks like that was the issue. So we see uh, socket successfully created and successfully bound to port 4790. Press any key to continue. All right, and that concludes this tutorial. In the next video, we are going to cover how to listen on a socket.